Welcome today. As we gather and worship, we are in the season of Advent. In fact, we're in the second week of Advent, which means we are journeying to the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, which we celebrate at Christmas. I welcome you today, and I pray God's blessings upon your worship. Before we get started, let me share a couple of announcements with you. The first one involves our midweek Advent worship services, which are available online each Wednesday. They feature artist Paul Oman, who uh, does a painting during the uh, service and has done the paintings here at Hope. So please join us for that each week during the season of Advent on Wednesdays. Second announcement involves and includes our upcoming voters meeting, which is December 13th at 1 p.m. This will be a virtual meeting, so it will be online. Details can be found in the announcements or on the website. As we begin today, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Root of Jesse, standing as an ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings are mute, to whom the nations will do homage, come quickly to deliver us. O Key of David and Scepter of the House of Israel, you open and no one can close, you close and no one can open. Come and rescue the prisoners who are in darkness and the shadow of death. Faithful God, you always keep your promises and you said that you would never leave us or forsake us. As we enter this Advent journey and light these candles, prepare our hearts to be carriers of your hope. Amen. Come, oh, come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's high, in ancient times did give the law, in cloud and majesty and all, rejoice. Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou branch 
of Jesse's tree. Free them from Satan's tyranny. That trust thy mighty power to save. And give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, Strengthen us to serve you with purified lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, beginning in chapter 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. This time we join together as we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory 
to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. We hail thee as our Savior, Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without thy grace we waste away like flowers that wither and decay. All praise eternal Son to Thee, whose advent sets Thy people free, whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Spirit evermore. Today we're beginning a new sermon series. We're looking at Handel's Messiah and the biblical texts that inspired the music that we hear so often at Christmas. And as we do so, we turn to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. Let me share that with you, if I could. Beginning in verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them has shined light. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall continually grow and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Let's begin with a prayer. Gracious God, Today, as we continue our Advent journey, I pray that you would strengthen and keep us through the words of Isaiah chapter 9 and through the meaning of Handel's Messiah and how it reveals our Messiah, Jesus Christ, to us. Lord, use me to proclaim this message to your glory and in Jesus' name. Amen question I want to start you with is, did you decorate for Christmas yet? Did you notice I used the word yet? I suspect that many of us, if not most of us, will do some sort of decorating for Christmas. 
While I was decorating, I realized that so much of what we do at Christmas and how, how we prepare for Christmas is all rooted in tradition. As I was thinking about our Christmas traditions, I came across a list of some of the weirdest and most strange Christmas traditions from around the world. And so I thought I'd share just a few of these with you. The first one, I don't know if you know it or not, but did you know that in Japan, the traditional Christmas meal is Kentucky Fried Chicken? KFC evidently does Christmas right in Japan. In Germany, there's a tradition of hanging a pickle ornament on a Christmas tree. Some of you know that. Some of you have a German heritage and you've seen that. I hang a pickle ornament in my tree as well at home uh, just to support this one. Now, if a pickle on your Christmas tree doesn't seem to strike you quite enough, it's tradition to put a spider ornament on your tree in Ukraine. And did you know that in Iceland, they celebrate the tradition of the Yule Cat? The Yule Cat is said to come at Christmas Eve and eat, yes, eat, anyone who doesn't have new Christmas clothes to wear. That's a nice children's bedtime Christmas story, evidently, in Iceland. For us, many of our Christmas traditions involve music. Christmas wouldn't seem like Christmas without a way in a manger, silent night, or joy to the world, among, among others. And of course, one of the most recognizable pieces of Christmas music is George Handel Messiah, uh, George Handel's Messiah. Many are familiar with the words of it, and in particular when it gets to the Hallelujah Chorus. Well, interestingly enough, Handel originally wrote Messiah for Easter, but its focus on the Messiah's birth quickly connected it to the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Handel collaborated with an individual named Charles Jennings, who compiled Messiah's words from various biblical passages. Now, among these passages that he pulled out for Messiah was our reading for today from Isaiah chapter 9, especially verse 6. It seems appropriate to have included this passage in Messiah because I, Isaiah chapter 9 takes us on a journey. The journey of Isaiah 9 starts in darkness. My Christmas decorating goal this year was to automate all my Christmas lights. I wanted my house to go from pitch black to shining as though the star of Bethlehem had descended upon me with just one command. I got everything in place and began to test how well it worked. The first time I issued the command for the lights to turn on, I was surprised by how bright it got. But equally, when I issued the command to turn them off, I was shocked by how I was suddenly in a house that was dark. Have you noticed how darkness can sometimes make us feel alone and isolated? Verse 2 has this to say about darkness. It says, the people who walked in darkness. And then it goes on and it says, those who lived in a land of deep darkness. Now the question this verse presents us with is, who are the people who walk in darkness? And what about the people who live in a land of deep darkness, who are they? short answer is that it's us. Darkness in verse 2 means something like distress or, or like danger, misery, destruction, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness in 
even death. Collectively, we are currently experiencing the darkness of a pandemic, of COVID. On an individual level, each of us has experienced some sort of darkness in our own life. Depression, loneliness, grief, addiction, illness, pain, suffering. It can make us feel like we are living and walking in a land of deep darkness. But the ultimate darkness for humanity is the spiritual darkness we experience apart from God. Spiritual darkness comes at us when we imagine we don't need God. And instead we believe that we have all the answers. It can also come at us when we feel like God isn't with us and we're on our own. We enter into spiritual darkness when our thoughts and our actions are not what God expects of us. Isaiah 9 shows us the depth of the darkness that we're in without God. The journey of Isaiah 9 may start in darkness, but it ends in light. Every Saturday, my son and I wake up early so we can go outside and exercise. It's always dark at first, so we take lights with us. Before long, the sky begins to lighten and the sun gradually appears and pushes the darkness aside, shining its warmth on us as we go. If you've ever experienced a sunrise in some way, shape, or form like I have, then you know what Isaiah is saying to us. Listen again to verse 2. It says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. What I find most comforting about this verse is how it says that we are not only able to see this great light, but the light also shines on us. So we see and experience the light firsthand. Isaiah 9 reveals the source of the light. The source of the light is God who sends a son to us. Verse 6 shows us the source of this light. It says, For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his name and upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. One of the really striking things about this passage is that it was written several hundred years before Jesus' birth. And it amazingly tells how God would act by sending Jesus into the world. And it even gives us names for Jesus as it does so. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but names tend to link us to the past. They identify who we are and to whom we are related. But other than serving as identifiers, we tend not to read too much into the meaning of a name. Biblical names, by contrast, are pretty different, especially those given to God. God's names reveal God's character. They show us what God is like. The names given to God's Son, Jesus, show us this character. He is our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. My prayer for you today is that the Lord, who shines the light of Jesus on you, would bless and keep you in the character and person of Jesus Christ, who is your Savior, your Messiah. 
Let's pray. Almighty God, strengthen us now and always through Jesus the Messiah, the Son sent from God to call us to life, the one who is our wonderful counselor, our everlasting Father, our mighty God, our Prince of Peace. Lord, we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Help us to see that all creation declares your praise. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. When people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice speak words of truth, and comfort. Lead us towards the world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven grounds smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain your support of people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. 
Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend to those who are sick or struggling with depression and gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you come alongside the members of our community and care for your body, you care for your own. This morning we lift into your care Maureen Wheeler, who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. For Roger Sonneberg, who has also been diagnosed with COVID-19 and is hospitalized. For Ramey, our preschool director, her daughter Diana, who were diagnosed with COVID-19. And for Ricardo, who was also diagnosed with COVID-19. Lord, we thank you for the recovery and healing from COVID-19 you brought to Scott's daughter-in-law or stepdaughter and son-in-law. And Lord, we pray for the family of Tom Steinmetz, who was called home after dying from COVID-19. Lord, for Mary Kay, who was in need of healing, for Don Allman for continued healing, or for Nathan as he's treated for seizures, and for peace and comfort for his mom and dad and their family as they support him in this. For Jack as he awaits approval for medication, and Lord, for the family of Roger Kempf, who himself was called home to be with the Lord. Lord, for all of those that we have named and so many more we know in our hearts, we pray for your continued healing, for your comfort, and Lord, just for your peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their work. Make their generous lives an example for us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Savior of the nations, come. Virgin Son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord chose such a birth. Not by Yeah. 
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.